This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Clay, it's always good to have a leader of your team coming back to school, as it was for K.J. Jefferson. Now Devontae Davis making his return in the basketball program. Uh, just kind of your initial thoughts on the news we got last yesterday afternoon. Yeah, I think it's the same as like having a K.J. Jefferson back. Uh, I think when, you know, you get a, a Kevin Copps, you know, a veteran senior guy, a K.J. Jefferson, a DV, Devo Davis, senior not not just a leader i mean you know you can have guys that you know are leaders but this is a four-year guy he's he uh came in with with you know with muscleman he's he's he knows everything about the system knows how the coach is going to react you know like he can settle down players when muscleman is you know on one of his tangents and he knows they're going to be those tangents, you know. It's like that's just the way that the guy rolls. Um, there's so many good, good tentacles about this. Uh, his growth as a basketball player. I mean, he, you know, I think he shot 34 percent on threes last year. And was better at the end than he was at the start. Um, he, he just the, the value that he brings. Uh, to the team and then there's the flip side the value that he brings to the program the people that lay down their money to buy tickets they love the guy how many times have you thought about that interview after the kansas game and the tears that flowed and and, uh you know what it meant to watch a guy from jacksonville take over a game against that kind of a team in that kind of a setting. It just it doesn't – like I said, there's just so many layers to this, and they all are really important. Yeah, And put the entire – not just team, but the state on his back during that game. I don't know that was said over and over again. And, again, you labeled it out. In-state kid initially was committed to Oklahoma State, chose Arkansas. And, um, Tommy, you were you were just talking about earlier what the, the impact that he could have with some of the, the young – I say younger guys, but the guys that are coming in on the roster – well, I mean, I think just, just newcomers, having, yeah, mm-hmm. newcomer. I think just t- navigating Coach Muss and his staff and what he wants, his expectations. Hey, this guy's yelling at me. How do I do? You know, just someone to, 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 <laughs> that's one of your peers, so to speak, to to talk through. He, he's been through all of that. He knows what's coming next from Muss and this staff. So I, I just think having a player in the locker room that can prepare guys for. What coach is going to do next is, a, is is can be undervalued, Clay. Yeah, the flip side of that is he can yell at the coach. Yeah, I mean, he's doing that right. There are only a few guys ever that can yell at the coach. He may be one of them. And, and in other words, coach, I got this. Yeah. You know, out of the room. This is our team. I got this. That might not happen but once a year, but it's important when it does. You know, or in a practice. And I watched a practice last year. He he had nicked up his knee a little bit, did not practice that day, and he's on a bike most of the time, you know, a stationary bike. And something was going on, and, and uh, Musselman was making a point. Devo hopped off the bike, ran out there, and he said, Coach, let me explain that to him. And, I mean, he went off. And, I mean, Nick Smith and some of those other guys are like, holy crap, we want Devo back on the bike. Yeah. <laughs> you know, coach so, Devo. Yeah. And so, that, but, you know, and the, and the coach is just, he steps back and he's behind everybody. They can't see him. He's grinning from ear to ear. I mean, that's a, that, like I say, the value of that is just huge. And there's so many times the coach isn't in the locker room. And, and there's, you know, there's got to be somebody holding court, and he, he'll be the guy. Yeah, Jordan Walsh going to move on and, and remain in the draft. Now, I don't know if you've talked to Muss or anyone over there, and, and it's just, you know, it's fresh news from late last night. But I just, I'd like to get a better feel, Clay, of, you know, where his game has really improved from, from end of March till now. Cause I think a lot of people have had the opinion that, you know, maybe he wasn't quite quite there when the season ended, but... Clearly, the draft process has brought some improvement to his game to, to fit, make him feel like it's a solid decision to stay in the draft process. Yeah, so I'm going to speak on that a little bit. 
I thought he looked like an NBA player last year. And, and, and in some ways, he was frustrated because he tried at times to do too much on the defensive end with his hands, so active in, in fouling. And that's the, that was the number one thing he had to clean up because mm-hmm. when he was out there, he impacted games. He played above the rim. He played physical. He played all. He did all the things, you know, like one to ten, you know, about eight of them that I thought, well, that looks like an NBA guy. But then there was a couple of things that he did, which is, you know, foul too much. Um, that, you know, and when the ball would come through the lane, he would reach and hack. And he would, you know, he got the ball a lot of times. He poked it away. And, you know, he poked it away on the on the free throw that was really big. So he, he did some things with his hands that were really aggressive that either were wonderful or immediate fouls. And so the, the things that he had to clean up were really minuscule in the grand scheme of, okay, if I'm an NBA team, what do I think of that guy? Well, I want him. But he's he, it's not the polished player, but it's – you know, a lot of the things that are really hard to, you know, find, he has and could do. So I'm not at all surprised because if, if he stays on the floor, he impacted games every time. I mean, we, we saw big moments where he'd play five minutes and – the plus or minus would be off the charts good mm-hmm. with, with Jordan Walsh. And I thought Jordan, for being a true freshman, was very steady Eddie, even when uh, things didn't actually go his way. He played like a, a man. Yeah. Uh, now the question becomes, with Jordan announcing that, he's got one w- roster spot currently remaining on this team. Clay, Tommy and I are agreement. you got to go get a big man. you got to go get a man's man. What, what do you think they need to add to this roster out of the portal? Uh, so, so I would disagree with you 100%. Okay. And because I think when I watch, when I when I watch the NCAA tournament, it is guards, 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 and I would find I would find another guy that can score the basket and can shoot the ball. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna push back on this because while that's very true, and uh, but that's all you need to say. That's true. Okay, <laughs> you've that's had, all you need to say. You've added five guards out of the portal in the last two years. Get you another one. The Adam Sinogo, as good as those guards were for Connecticut, Adam Sinogo was an unstoppable force down low. We didn't have anyone. Hey, to guard if him. you can find me one of those, take him. Okay. There's not one out yeah, there. No, no, I, no. I realize that, but <laughs> you think so about you can find an Oliver Miller, go get him. You think about the you front. You find a Corliss, go get him. But I guarantee you, there's a hundred guards out there that could help this team. A hundred. I just wonder about the front court depth because you lost Trevin last year and you had Mikel here. Mikel's in Little Rock now. You think about Makai, Jalen Graham, who's not exactly dominant defensively in the post. Trevin Brazil, who will be coming off that injury. And then you're adding in Bay Fall, who Bay has the athletic ability, but he's a small, slender freshman that hasn't hit a college weight room yet. So that's why I think the front court depth is lacking. And the guards, again, it's important, but you seem to have added five to this point. I, I, that's where I'd kind of I'd swing I'd get another it. one. I mean, uh, it's just every great team – to me, has six or seven guys that can shoot the basketball. And, I, you know, of all the – I mean, the 94-95 teams that were as good as anything you can imagine, um, they had the big guys. You know, they, they had 6'9", 6'10", 6'11", 6'11". They had that, and, and it's important. But they won games because they had five, six, seven guys that could all shoot the basketball, and you just couldn't stop them. They were going to score. And um, that's the kind of team I like to watch. And uh, it's, it's, you know, when I watched Baylor win the national championship, they could fill it up with about six guys. When I watched UConn, it was always, to me, their, their scores. Now, the, the, you know, they did have the big guy, but I think he's he is a freak over the last 10 years. I mean, you know, I saw Anthony Davis and I saw this guy. There's only a few of those out there, and I, I don't think they're 
I don't think they're low hanging fruit that you can just go get. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, but I think you can probably find another. That's me. I won't. I, I was. I was really pained last year, not seeing a team that could score the basket from the from the arc. Mm-hmm. I think they still determine the winner with points. So someone that can put it through the nets. Uh, and you got to yeah, rebound, important. and you got to stop. Yeah. You got to you got to match the other team's big guy. But I, uh, it just seems like of late the game has been more about the guards. Yeah. Clay Scotty. Bordelon is down at SEC media, excuse me, SEC spring meetings in Destin at Miramar Beach, and he's talking with coaches. He's listening to Greg Sankey and everything else, and doing our best to monitor what's going on with the gambling, the NIL transfer portal stuff. But the eight or nine game schedule seems to be the hot topic here on these airwaves. And and I wonder your thoughts with Eli Drinkowitz and some of the other coaches having strong opinions. I was surprised to hear Drink say that they want nine games. Missouri, who has not fared well in the SEC. Uh, what, what do you think happens at the conclusion of this week in terms of the announcement from the conference? Yeah. When I hear Coach talk, there's two things that uh, that come to mind. All right, what's his what's his motivation? What's his agenda? And what by saying this does he gain or lose? And it was it's pretty clear to me that Drinkowitz has kind of checked the pulse of high school players and transfer players and that they all like the nine game. And so I bet he doesn't really care, but he thinks that might play well on some young years. So that that's why I think he says what he says. And um, I think that by and large what Kirby Smart says is probably how most of them feel we got more important things to worry about. We're not going to be the one to make this decision. Uh, you know, there's going to be, you know, the athletic director or the chancellor is going to make this decision or maybe a board of trustees group that tells those guys what mm-hmm. to do. And it really is a huge waste of time or energy, you know, for Sam Pittman to really spend a lot of time. And, and, and here's what it does. So you don't get to make the decision. You know, it's kind of like you got five kids in the room, and you go around the room, and they're all griping. We want to, you know, we we want we want Arby's or we want KFC, and then you know, like you got you got four votes for this, you know, among the kids, and then mom speaks. Well, that's where you're going. <laughs> so. Why spend all that time worrying about something you don't get to decide? And I think these coaches are pretty much in agreement. Somebody make the decision, and then we'll go do our Let's job. Roll with it. You, you said- well, I mean, I, I, here's where I differ a little bit from that. I think, by and large, this isn't true in every case. Chancellors and presidents listen to their ADs. And they take a, you know take that and weight it very heavily, and that's what they'll do. And then ADs, the, the hardest job for an AD is hiring a football coach and finding one that can win and run your program. They want to keep that guy happy. And if your coach wants eight, that's probably the way that you know yeah. you're going to influence it up the chain. If your guy wants nine, that's the way it's going to go because I don't want to have to replace this guy that I'm happy with. I, I and used I, to and, really and I think on that. I used to really believe that. For instance. Coach Broles is the AD and the, and the head coach. He, he pretty much, you know, had his board, and he knew that there, you know it was seven to three in his favor or whatever. And he, you know, bounced that off and said, "This is what I want to do." And they all nod, nod their heads. That's not the way it is now. The head coach is not the most important guy in the room. They they are viewed as expendable by most of these boards. I mean. I'm just telling you, the boards think they know it all. And the the ADs and the chancellor, I mean, for instance, let's talk about the Arkansas State deal. Do you think Hunter Yurchek made that decision? I don't. I do not. I, I agree. And I do not think that. I think I, the governor that, had a heavy hand in that. No question. And the board was appointed by the governor. Enough of the votes that, 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 that swing it. So, uh, you know, and if you're the head coach, if you're the head coach, if you're, 
you know, if you're Dave Van Horn or you're this guy, don't spend a lot of time arguing over what it ought to be. Just, you know, just do your job and go get the best players and be ready to play. And I think that's what most of these these coaches, um, you know, Lane Kiffin, he, he's he's not in charge of that decision because he might not be there in another year. And that's why you don't, you know, in, in Sam Pittman, you know, is he a 20-year guy? Probably not. So it's not going to be, you know, something that's going to happen in two, three, four years. These guys are not going to make the decision. Nick Saban's not going to be here in three, four years. Kirby Sprott might be. Say that again. Promise me that's going to be true. I said probably. I didn't say (laughs) I. But, I mean, uh, it's just, it's the the nature. I'm, I'm almost 69. You know, it's like, you know, the things that, if you're Tommy, if you're making decisions on what's going to be happening in two, three, four years with your company, I don't know that I'll be here. So I mean, why, why, why ask me? What do you think we ought to do here and here? No, you need to make that decision. You don't need to ask me. Well, history uh, tells you know, us half the, the guys that are closer to retirement. Yeah. You know, I mean, not closer to retirement, closer to you know being out the door because it there's. Just look around. How well, many coaches right. have been there five years? Not Half many. of them will be gone in four years. That's yeah, just what history tells That's what tells I'm saying. So don't let them make the decision because they're not going to be the ones that have to do it. BetOnline.ag is your number one source for all your basketball info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports for this year's Pro Basketball Playoffs. BetOnline is always your sports information headquarters this season as we have you covered for all your sports wagering needs. Basketball, MLB, NHL hockey, right down to UFC and boxing. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way for you to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games you can play right from your home. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's B L E A V. B L E A V. Bet Online, where the game starts.